Hello everybody, this is Mr. Johnson, and I'm here for Algebra 1. Today we're going to be talking about equations, and actually we're getting into inequalities. We are at a new target, and if you can look in your notes, we are target EI2. And what we want you to be able to do is to be able to graph and solve inequalities using addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So we're going to be using the same rules that we've been practicing with the equations, but we're applying them to an idea with inequalities. Now, if you recall, inequalities are the less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to symbols. They tell you that, hey, one side is bigger than the other. They say that two things are not equal. They compare. Yesterday, in our notes, we talked about the meaning of different solutions for equations. And we found that there can be three options. There can be one solution, no solution, or infinite solutions. So every single equation that we do is going to fall into one of those categories. And most of the equations that we talked about were one solution. So you would get like x equals 10 or x equals 0.5 or even x equals 0. 0 is a number. So no solution would be if you work through a problem and you got something that's false, like 2 equals 6. 2 is not equal to 6. Um, there's no way that that would work. Um, or if you had x plus 1 equals x minus 1. That's something that doesn't work. If you add 1 to a number, it is not the same thing as subtracting 1 from that number. And infinite solutions was if you get something that is always true, like x equals x, or 6 equals 6, something like that. That means any number that you would put into that equation would balance the equation. So you could pick 42, you could pick 17, you could pick anything. They all work. So today we're going to be talking about equations that have many, many solutions, in fact, infinite, but you can't choose some number. So I know that sounds weird, but I think you're going to see what happens here with some inequalities. You either get a certain set of numbers to the right or a certain set of numbers to the left. If we had to graph the difference between x equals 3 and x is greater than or equal to 3, what would the picture look like and how would that be different? If I'm graphing x equals 3, and I have maybe the origin right in the middle, one, two, three spots over, that is where x equals three. It's a point. Now, that is a little bit different from x, and we say x is greater than or equal to three. If our origin's at the same spot, and here is three, what numbers would be greater than or equal to three? And we could test them out. So four, four is greater than or equal to three. So that means, hey, four is a solution. So we could put a dot there. That would work. Um, five. Five is greater than or equal to three. So five is a solution. Heck, I could even do 4.5. 4.5 is greater than or equal to three. So that means there's a dot here. Now, you're starting to notice we're getting a bunch of dots that are getting closer together. And I could choose maybe like 4.1, 4.2, 4.3. And all these dots start to make a line. Now this line is going to continue in the right-hand direction. This is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if that's 10, hey, 10 is greater than or equal to 3. So we would continue in this direction. But the real question that I'm concerned about right now is how far we can go. How far can we go to the right? Well, to the right, you can go forever because if you chose 100, 100 is greater than or equal to 3. It's to the left where we start to have problems. So I'm thinking, hmm, 3.5. 3.5 is greater than or equal to 3, so that satisfies my original equation. So I could have a dot here. Uh, even 3.0001 is slightly bigger than 3. So I can have a dot almost on 3. Now, can I include 3? That's a good question. 
would 3 be greater than or equal to 3? And yeah, that would work because you have the equals to part underneath that inequality. So we can go ahead and we can put a closed dot on 3. And we have a line extending to the right. And it extends to the right forever. So that means some numbers that would work for this equation. 4, 5, 5.2, 5 5.2315. 5 5. Anything that is greater than or equal to 3. So if you compare these two, x equals 3, that's one solution, you get one dot. x is greater than or equal to 3, you get a ray. So anything that is bigger than or equal to 3 starts at 3 and it goes on forever. So there are technically infinite solutions. You could choose 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That would go on forever. But there are numbers that wouldn't work, like 0 would not work. Negative 2 would not work. Even 1 would not work. That's why there's no line over on this part of the graph. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the signs and what they do to this picture. Because not everything's just going to go to the right. So for inequalities, we have uh, four different symbols. We have like x is less than 5 x is less than or equal to 5, x is greater than 5, and x is greater than or equal to 5. And so we're going to have to be able to determine what our picture looks like. So let's say 5 is just in the middle for all these graphs, just for simplicity's sake. If we are less than 5, that means we could choose like 4 or 3 or 2. These are numbers that are down here to the left. And if I have maybe 4.99, that would still work. I could have 4.99999. That is still less than 5. But the second that I hit 5, 5 is not less than 5. That would not work. That's false. So we can get really, really close to 5, but we can't touch 5. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put an open circle here on 5. And then since the numbers in our solution set were to the left, we shade to the left and put an arrow. So less than is an open circle. Now, if we include 5, if we could equal 5, this is going to be very similar. Okay, so we can have 3, 4, we can have this shaded area. But instead of having an open circle at 5, we can shade that dot in because we can equal 5. That's very important. So we can have a value of 5 and anything that's smaller. So there's a difference between less thans, they're open circles, and less thans are equal to, that's a closed circle. So if we have x is greater than 5, that's probably going to be more like this case over here. So we're going to have an open circle on 5, and greater than, that means the numbers are really big. So that's like 6. 6 is greater than, or e greater than 5. So I can shade to the right. And the last one, greater than or equal to. Very similar, it's just that we get to shade in that dot. And if it's greater than, that means I'm going towards the big numbers. Towards the big numbers. One thing that I would do to maybe remember this is uh, these inequalities, they're kind of like alligators. All right, here's the mouth. Alligators always want to eat something that's big. They don't want to deal with something that's small. Okay, the small things are maybe towards their tail. So here's your alligator, boop. And then the small things are more towards their tail. They want to eat the big stuff. And the big numbers, the big numbers are to the right on the number line. These are the small numbers. So small is to the left. X in this case is big, so that means we need to go to the right. So let's go ahead and let's see if we can solve some equations, okay? But they're not equations with an equal sign. They're equations with an inequality sign. So we're going to solve these inequalities. So if I have x minus 15 is less than or equal to 46, it's very similar to what we've been doing. I need to get the x by itself. You have a left-hand side and a right-hand side. So the minus 15 is a problem. I need to move it to the other side by adding 15. So I plus 15 and plus 15, I get x is less than or equal to 46 plus 15 
is 61. So on my number line, uh, we don't have enough space to go from 0 to 61, so let's just put 61 somewhere in the middle. Now, since we have a part of an equal sign, that means it's a closed dot. Okay, closed dot. So we're going to put a solid dot on 61. Now, x in this case is not getting eaten. Okay, remember, the big things are getting eaten. The small things are at the tail. So since x is at the tail, x is small. So I need all the numbers that are less than or equal to 61. That would be the numbers that are going in the small direction to the left. So some examples of numbers, 60, right there, 59. We could even go down to 0 and negative 1. Those would all be numbers smaller than or equal to 61. So for number 4, maybe I'll change colors for number 4. I have x minus 5 is greater than or equal to negative 7. So to get rid of the minus 5, I'm going to add 5, add 5. So I have x greater than or equal to, this behaves very similar to an equal sign, and negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2. So if we put negative 2 on our graph, we know it's going to be a closed circle. So there's our dot. And now we have to look, is x big or is x small? Well, since it's getting eaten, here are the teeth, that means x is big. So I need to go towards the big numbers. So negative 2, the numbers to the right of that are the big numbers. So an example of some solutions. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, 103. All of those numbers would satisfy that inequality. So let's go ahead and let's try 5 and 6. So for 5, I have x minus 17 is greater than 17. So if I need to get rid of the minus 17, I need to add it. So I'm going to add it to both sides. All right. and sometimes you think, oh, there's a 17 on both sides. It's probably just 1, or sorry, 0. That's not the case. Do the math. So we get x on the left. We have greater than. The sign doesn't change. And 17 plus 17 is 34, 34. So let's put 34 somewhere on our graph. This sign means that I do not fill it in. It's an open circle. So I'm going to make my open circle on 34. That means I cannot touch 34. I can get really, really close to it, but I can't touch it. And now, is x big or is x small? We look, x is getting eaten. So x is big. So I go towards the big numbers. So I'm going to shade to the right. So that's numbers like 35, 36, um, maybe even like 50 is somewhere up here. Those are numbers that would satisfy that inequality. So there are multiple solutions, an infinite number of solutions. Question number six. Question number six, very similar to the others. Um, if we have 32 plus x is less than 5, we need to get rid of the numbers on the same side as x. So we subtract 32 and subtract 32. So 5 minus 32, since those are opposites, you subtract them, and usually I take the bigger minus the smaller, which is 27, and there were more negatives here, so negative 27 is my answer. On the right, I have greater than... And I have x left over on the left-hand side. So that's an open circle on negative 27 right here. And then we got to see, am I going to the left? Am I small? Or am I going to the right? And be, would x be big? So we go back up to our inequality right here. And x is at the tail end. So x is small. So I need to go towards these small numbers. So I would really, really, really encourage you Label what x is. Is x big or is x small? That's going to help. That's going to help a lot. So just a couple of questions here on the back. 
Anytime that you're solving for an equation or an inequality, it's important to check your answer and to make sure that it actually works. Sometimes you make mistakes. It happens. So we're going to find, check, and graph our solution for these problems. So for 7, I have x minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 is greater than or equal to 6. So one thing that I think we can do is combine some like terms. This is just one way to solve this equation. So if I'm subtracting 3, then subtracting 2, and then subtracting one more, in total, I am subtracting 6. So it would be minus 6. That's combining some like terms. So I have x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 6. So I'm going to go ahead, get rid of the 6, move it over to the other side by adding. So plus 6 and plus 6. So here I have x greater than or equal to, the sign doesn't change, 6 plus 6 is 12. So on my number line I have 12. This says since it's greater than or equal to, it is a closed circle. Closed circle. And then I have to label as x big or as x small. So right back up here. x is big. It's getting eaten. Here are the teeth of the inequality. x is on the big end. So I need to go towards the big numbers. So the big numbers are to the right. Big. So how would we check this? I'll make my checks light blue. Well, we need to test some of these numbers. So maybe like 13 or 14 or maybe 15. Usually I pick something that's reasonable. So you could choose 13 or we could even choose 12 right there at the end. Let's do 13. 13 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1. Is that greater than or equal to 6? So 13 minus 3 is 10, minus 2 minus 1. 10 minus 2 is 8, minus 1. 8 minus 1 is 7. Is 7 greater than or equal to 6? Yes, it is. So that works. Even if we tried 12, 12 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1, you would get 6 is greater than or equal to 6. And that is true because you have part of the equal sign in there. So that's our check. So what about 8? Eight? 8 looks kind of scary because it's got some fractions. But we just have to remember how to add and subtract fractions. All you have to do is get common denominators. And we're actually lucky enough that these are both speaking the language of thirds. So they're good. We just have to figure out how to move the third, the one-third, on the left over to the right. And since it's positive, you subtract it. So those cancel. And we subtract one-third. So four-thirds minus one-third, that is three-thirds. And if you know anything about fractions, a number over itself is one. Three divided by three is one. So I have x less than one. That's not too hard to graph. So I put one on my number line. It's an open circle because there's no equal sign under here. If that had been the case, we would have closed it in. And then, is x big or small? It's at the tail end, so I think it's small. So we're going to go towards the small numbers to the left. So an example that would work, that we could check. Um, let's see, 1 to the left of that is 0. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So let's go ahead and let's just try 0 is one-third plus zero less than four-thirds. So one-third plus zero is one-third. One-third, is that less than four-thirds? You betcha it is. One-third is very small. Four-thirds is a little bit over one because it's an improper fraction. So let's go ahead and let's try question number nine and 10, the last two problems on the notes. So we have x minus negative six, is less than or equal to negative 11. So there are actually some tricks that we have to do here. If you remember back from the numbers unit, subtracting a negative is like adding a positive. So really this says x plus 6 is less than or equal to negative 11, which that's easy. So if we need to get rid of plus 6, we subtract it across to the other side. You want to get the numbers away from x. So x 
is less than or equal to negative 11 and negative 6 make negative 17. So on my number line, I have negative 17. It is a closed circle because there's part of an equal sign. And then I have to label as x big or as x small. And it's at the tail end, so it is small. So I go towards the small numbers on my number line. So numbers that would be in that direction, like negative 18, negative 19, negative 20. If we use some of those, we should get something that is workable. That's true in my check, in my equation. So let's try negative 20. Negative 20 minus a negative 6 should be less than or equal to negative 11. So we know those make positives. Negative 20 plus 6 should be less than or equal to negative 11. Negative 20 plus 6 is negative 14. And that is less than or equal to negative 11. Remember, negatives, the further away you are from 0, the smaller you are. That's why this is small and this is larger. It's big. It's not necessarily a big number, but it's bigger than, whoops, bigger than negative 14. Okay, last question of the day. So this one's a little bit more complicated. We got some more parts. But I think if you are observant, you notice, hey, on the left, 12 and 5, those are like terms. So 12 minus 5 is 7. Let's rewrite everything else. That's a good habit to get into. So 7 is greater than or equal to n plus 5. That's how you would read that. Now, n, sorry, n plus 3. Obviously, I can't read. n plus 3, two things there. We cannot combine them. They are not like terms. But we can subtract 3 and get it away. So 7 minus 3 on the left-hand side is 4. So 4 is greater than or equal to n. So, hmm, that's actually backwards kind of from what we've been writing because usually the letter has been on the left. But it's okay to write it like this. You could switch it around and say n is less than or equal to 4. That's perfectly fine because it is eating 4 in both of these examples. That's what's important. So in this, we need to put 4 on our number line. It is a closed circle. And is n big or is n small? And in both of these cases, n is small. It's on the tail end. That's why it's important to make sure you're eating the same thing. So if n is small, we go to the left. So some numbers that would work. Um, 3 is over here. 2, 1, 0. So I always like 0. So let's test 0 to check. So 12 minus 5, is that greater than or equal to 0 plus 3? So 0 plus 3, that's 3. 12 minus 5, that's 7. And 7 is greater than or equal to 3. So we know that works. Hopefully, this is relatively easy. The only thing that's different is the inequality sign. That's really the only change from equations. So if you could solve equations, I think you will do great with inequalities. We will talk about some things that are just a little bit different, but that will be coming up next week. If you guys could go ahead and uh, work on your homework, that will be due next week on Tuesday. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you later.